Death is being marketed by euthanasia advocates. They are misrepresenting their true goals. There's a world of difference between helping someone as they're dying and causing them to die. For more than 2,000 years, the Hippocratic Oath has been a protective shield for the patient and the doctor. And it's protected society from the inevitable floodwaters that come once we open the doors to legalized killing. We know that people in emotional or physical pain may often express a desire to die. But what that is, is a cry of help. It's an invitation to us not to kill them, but to get involved in their lives. We've seen that in Holland, they've opened a Pandora's box, and now that box can't be closed. We know that suicide and thoughts of suicide can themselves be contagious. And where assisting suicide is legalized, death will itself become a very effective salesman. I want to ask you about something that you said in there. HMOs are shopping around for doctors that'll go for this? Is that happening? Well, the, uh, there's one of the major HMOs and they uh, uh, circulated an email among their doctors indicating that they they couldn't find enough doctors to do it and they were asking doctors to come forward that would be willing to write the prescriptions because they weren't getting enough to Do you think do the it. average person watching this show right now understands everything that's involved with the motivation behind this movement, this law? I, I don't think so and I I, I encourage people to learn as much as they can. Uh, what I have learned is that uh, the more we can talk about it, the more people will see the, the harm and the dangers. Well, I think there's such, it's such a disadvantage for people because the front, let me ask you this, how many times has the front page of the local paper said the bad side of assisted suicide and featured somebody, how many? Rarely. Yeah, rarely. we don't have a stack of those, yeah. do we? Um, how but, but, many? But, but, you know, but one of the interesting things that happens is that we, the these articles that come out, uh, tell us the things that are that are harmful about it. Uh, uh, the instance of the uh, of uh, Mrs. Lavelle Sfart. Right. Uh, um, I think that was very strange to me. Again, I've been a, a doctor taking care of a lot of patients that are dying. Right. She was not but dying. She was not close to dying a natural death. She was probably many weeks, maybe even months away from that. I, one of the things I have learned is that you cannot always tell when a person is terminal. No. I, I've, I've had patients that have come to me or been referred to me with, say, lung cancer. The lung cancer is spread to the brain. The doctor is told it, the patient, you know, you're terminal. And uh, I've had a number of patients where I have treated them, treated their lung cancer, treated their brain tumor, even when they have that. And one I remember in particular uh, lived two and a half years very well. He saw two grandchildren born that he would not have. I think have, that's so important that to say would, that. We, another woman uh, had, uh, was referred to me with a colon, or like a low rectal tumor. And uh, uh, she was referred, and, and the tumor was actually such that we could treat it with surgery. With, 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 we could treat it without surgery. We could treat it with radiation and chemotherapy. I told her the likelihood of her being cured was about 70, 80 percent. Wow. She said, "No, I want to wait until I'm eligible for the assisted suicide." And I said, "And she uh, really made up her mind." And why do you think that? She had made up her mind. She had cancer. She just thought mm -hmm. the cancer was a bad thing. And I said, "Would you be willing to come back next week?" So he came back next week. She still refused treatment. Mm -hmm. She did that three or four times. And what was her age? She was in her 50s. In her 50s? In her 50s. And, and finally I said, <sighs> tell me about your family. And she said, well, I've got a, a young, I've got a son in his 20s, late 20s. He's not married. I said, wouldn't you like to see him get married? Yeah, I could, I could do that. And she said, well, I, I treat, she, she received treatment with, with radiation and chemotherapy. The tumor melted away. She did not need surgery. Need surgery. She did not need to have a colostomy. About six, I don't about, believe about, it. About six years later, yeah. uh, my wife and I were in a uh, restaurant. She, this woman came up to me and said, Dr. Stevens, you saved my life. And this is like six years later. 
And, you know, I could... Six it, years six, later, six this years. woman is in a restaurant? Yes. She's cured. I don't believe she's cured. it. She's cured. She's cured. Yeah. And but, she... But, but she, when she, when I first saw her, her desire was for the assisted suicide because, because she had cancer. And, and, and she wasn't eligible she was afraid. with that. She was afraid of what might happen. And, and again, oh, the purpose of a doctor no. is to explain to the patient the reality of, you know, they may, you know, cancer is not a good diagnosis. Right. And there are different uh, prognosis of different right. types of cancer. Everybody's different. But, but you need to, uh, we really should be trusting our doctors. Uh, one, one of the things I have sort of considered in this is that uh, those people that say that you need to have this law because the doctor mm -hmm. can't take care of you, can't take care of you know, what may right. happen to you, what they're really saying is that the doctor can do a better job of killing you than caring for you. Ooh. And uh, so what we're going to have is we're going to have a society where if that were really tr to come to pass, we will have a situation where uh, Right. The ability of doctors to take care of things. In fact, one of the things I've learned, in fact, there are a number of instances of this where the, um, when you have assisted suicide available or euthanasia available, and this has been both in Oregon and in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. there's actually a decreased incentive to, to manage find, pain. To, to, to manage and to find a solution for it. There was, there was a doctor in the Netherlands who was a consultant uh, to other doctors that uh, do euthanasia. And one of these other doctors called him and said, I have a patient who has a bowel obstruction. In the past, I've always dealt with this by euthanizing him, giving him a lethal injection. Oh, right. This patient doesn't want that. This. What do I do? Well, this, this, no. this, this doctor had lost the ability to take care of a patient with bowel obstruction. What you want to do is make sure the person out there that is maybe wrestling right now with an upsetting diagnosis, maybe a terminal cancer diagnosis, uh, or a family member. You want them to know that assisted suicide is not the way to go because? The, the purpose of medicine is to really take care of a patient. There was a famous doctor, Francis Peabody, 80 years ago. He said the best way to care for a patient is in the caring of the patient. You, know, you, you care for right. them. And we have increasing abilities to take care of pain. We, we are not aware of any patient who's really had uncontrollable pain that, that, that has died of assisted suicide. They're, they're doing it because... Yeah, they're, and they're I think that's they're, important they're, to bring up. They're tired of life, or, right. they, or they want to, they've been controlling people. That they have been in yeah, control of in their control. life. They want to be in control of their of their. The type death. A personality that says, I'm going to be in charge till the end, and you're not going to stop me. Yeah. And, you know, I was going to say, what's wrong with... They, they look at hospice, they look at palliative uh -huh. care as getting in their way. Okay, okay. Because uh, they, want, they want to do it. They want to be in control of that. Well, as far as, as um, people being fooled, which we've talked about, you know, into thinking, I'm doing something really nice for my loved one if I go along with this idea, or, or even so if I encourage this idea. And I want to read some of the words that um, they have used, words that cover up... Uh, what we are, what we're so against. Death with dignity. Let people die. Helping people face death. Helping people deal with their death. Compassion in dying. Easing their burden and helping people. Basically, well, one, one they, the, want one, to, they want to keep saying the word help. Right, and, and one of the, one of the um, in fact, the, the medical director of the assisted suicide organization in Oregon says it is healing. I am healing. He what, said it's healing. She, she, a woman, she, she said, I am healing the patient when they die. When they kill them. Yes. That's well, a, I a guess. It's a form of healing. I guess it is yeah, one it, way to say double, you're it's cured. Double, it's double speak. Is you're dead. Yeah. And this, they say this with a straight face. Yeah. I can't believe these people right. actually say this with a straight face, that killing someone is healing them. They, and yeah, that's why medicine, um, that's why I felt the medicine really <laughs> turned upside down. <laughs> I think you're right. I really do. And um, I know this gets very personal for you. And you shared that on your website. I can't say enough about your website. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, education doesn't even be able to describe it. But um, if you don't mind sharing your pr very personal story with us that you shared on the website um, for people. I think it will help. Okay. Well, this actually occurred 12 years before Oregonians voted 
on assisted suicide. Uh, this was in uh, May of 1982. Okay. And my wife and I had been married for 18 years. We had six children. Uh, and um, she had had cancer. Uh, she had a, a, a lymphoma, cancer of the lymph nodes, that had started in a lymph node and uh, over a three year period had, uh, had eventually spread to her brain, to her spine, to her bones. So she had a lot of treatment with chemotherapy, with radiation. Right. And uh, we finally went to the doctor again in, in late May of 1982 and said, you know, what more can be done? She was on pain medication. She mm -hmm. was on antidepressants. Mm -hmm. her, she was failing mm -hmm. uh, physically. She had lost a lot of weight. And it was really evident that there was really nothing more curative type that could be done. Right. It, it was... Uh, uh, as far as more, chemotherapy, more just or keeping her keeping her comfortable. I guess I say she was on pain medication and and uh, you know sleeping medication and antidepressants. And as we were about to leave, her doctor said, "Well, I could write a prescription for an extra large amount of pain medication." It was very subtly said. Uh, and he said, "No, we've got sufficient pain medication." And as I helped my wife to the car, she said, "Ken, he wants me to kill myself." And it just devastated her. It devastated me that her doctor, her trusted doctor, would... It was very subtly said. And again, this was, this was before we had legal assisted suicide. Okay. And uh, it, it made, we, made me realize... I can't believe The it. importance of the... of trust, trust. between a doctor and a patient. I, I, that that a, doctor, a, a doctor would very subtly say to a patient, uh, I can give you a prescription that that you can use to cause your death with, without really saying it. I mean, it was very, Oh, of course. Yeah, very, the very implication was very, there very, very and, and, you know, and, and so she, had, she picked up on she, it. She had, been, she had had a lot of suffering, That's but that right. experience was probably the greatest suffering that she had, that her I doctor, her trusted doctor, would feel that her life was no longer of value. He wanted to quit. Yeah. He I think he was, I, and I think that you also have to be aware that, you know, doctors sometimes tire of patients. Well, or, you bring or, that or, up or when too very well. When, we can't, when you can't cure. Yes. You know, we, you know, it's the, exhausting you know, taking you know, care you know, of breast complex. You know, we, we have races for the cure of breast yeah. cancer, but we don't have races for the palliation of many things. We, you know, you're, th that's, you're right. You're and, right. And, and, well, about a week later she died in, in our home, and she was, it was at peace. She was at peace. Well, I'm glad she had you for a husband. Uh -huh. I'm so sorry for your loss of your wife, and, and I thank you so much for, for sharing her comment because I think that comment means a lot. It means what your doctor says to you is so important. And if somebody... We, 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 we mirror what other yes, people say Yes, and you take it as your... Or, or it, do it's very or hurtful. Their behavior. And if somebody out there has a doctor making a suggestion like that to them, what should they do? They should seek another doctor. I love it. Say it again. Seek another doctor. Thank seek, you. Seek, seek a good doctor. You have his permission. You have Dr. Stevens' permission. Get out of there.